Listening Library presents I Speak of Ghana by Nana Awere Damoa. Read by Kwame Asare. GH Till I Die. Following Ghana's independence in 1957, the country's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, wrote an autobiography which had the name Ghana as part of its title. Ghana, the autobiography of Kwame Nkrumah, an autobiography. Those who idolize Nkrumah may explain this as a reflection of how Nkrumah's personal life was intertwined with the nascent nation-state and an epitome of his patriotic dedication to Ghana. For those who are cynical of Nkrumah's leadership credentials, this title is another example of his self-glorification and unrestrained love for power. The truth is usually somewhere in the middle, as are many of the contested issues in the contemporary Ghanaian public sphere. Nana Awere Damwes I Speak of Ghana has taken a different route than the usual either or route we currently witness in the often noisy and cacophonous ranting of a large section of print, radio and television broadcasters. These media often want us to believe there are only two choices of evil and good to choose from on national issues, that is, the sometimes rigid positions of both the new patriotic party NPP and the National Democratic Congress NDC. In actuality, there are more choices to be made, and Damoa has chosen Ghana, declaring his freedom to be fiercely non-aligned to redundant ideological positions and rehashed political philosophies. I believe that Damoa's choice is the position of a vast majority of well-meaning Ghanaian intellectuals, professionals, civil servants and the masses of everyday Ghanaians interested in Ghana's self-actualization within the world community of nations. This is the patriotic way. Chapter 1 G.H. Till I Die I am from a place in Africa called Ghana, G.H. for short. G.H. is a little place, but we have egos and visions bigger than the African continent. If you doubt me, ask Kofi Annan. He will tell you about Kwame Nkrumah, the true Pan-African patriot from Nkrofo. G.H. till I die. The G.H. capital is Accra. I was raised in TN, La. And all over Accra, when I say TN, I don't mean Tennessee. And when I say LA, I certainly don't mean Los Angeles. I mean La, as in fire. La, where people walk around bare chested, strapped with fists ready to rumble. I survived. And that makes me a G from the H. GH till I die. GH, Ghana National College is my alma mater. For the fatherland or motherland pro patria, then I caught some sense of the University of Ghana, Integri Procedamus. GH till I die, baby. Yes, GH till I'm laid to rest. Because when I'm dead and gone, like Sergeant Ajete. They should drape my coffin with red, gold, and green. They shouldn't worry about a black star. They should just look in the sky and versify. There goes a black star. A black star from La. A black star from Osu. A black star from Accra. A black star from Formisunya. A black star from Chebiapapem. A black star from Africa. A black star from GH. G.H. till I die. Chapter 2 You know, you are in Ghana when street lights are visible decorations by day and invisible shadows by night. You know you are in Ghana when ambulances carry dead people leisurely from the hospitals while taxis carry sick people hurriedly to the hospitals. 
you know you are in Ghana when a politician pays you to get him into office only for you to pay him when he gets out of office. You know you are in Ghana when politicians ask what their country can do for them instead of asking what they can do for their country. You know you are in Ghana when you wonder whether the spokespersons for the big men speak with them before speaking for them. You know you are in Ghana when the fire service rushes to the scene of a fire only to realize they have no water in the fire tender to put out the fire. Chapter 3 Pro Patria for the sake of Africa It must have been the 4th or 11th of October 1986. It was a Saturday, a bright dry day. My big brother Intiako and I set off from Kotobabi in Accra for Cape Coast, Ghana. A long journey. The last time I had traveled that far from Accra was to my hometown but we used the sleeper, an overnight train and went straight to Takwa, from where we continued the journey to Wasa Ekropong. I recollect the climb of the vehicle up this steep road up a hill. The driver had to turn to the left and to the right to avoid the potholes, simultaneously ensuring that the journey is not in reverse towards a gapping valley behind us. We get off at a little roundabout by the pantry and directly opposite that is the house which became my abode, Kwesi Plange. I recall my brother handing me over to the first senior we met, his name Stagger. He automatically became my school father. Stagger had bloodshot eyes. After registration, I'm left with Stagger who takes me through the common room downstairs, up the stairs and to the top floor and to his cubicle directly opposite the end of the stairs in Cape Lange. All my stuff end up in his cubicle and the edible ones in his elementary canal. Story for another day. Chapter 4 Fearful Things in Sikaman It is a fearful thing to be in thick Accra traffic and to have an urgent call from nature. The first confusion is how to manage the heat in the car and the heat in the elementary canal simultaneously. Second challenge is how to control the pedals without disturbing the delicate equilibrium achieved as the mind goes into analytical scanning and zooming mode where to go. The options aren't a lot. According to my friend Kafuide, you could park the car, leave the hazard lights on, walk quickly to the nearest hotel, smile at the receptionist, request a brochure, then ask for the washroom. When you return to the front desk, hold up your keen interest in the hotel facilities available by asking a question or two. Thank the receptionist profusely and let her know you will be using the facility in a short while. Sweet relief. Get back to your car, pay the towing charges and drive away. Sounds like the best solution actually. Just that it is assumed that you can reach the hotel safely, you will surely have to walk with circumspection and calculated steps. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a Sikaman policeman. If it's not your license, it will be your insurance tag, which is checked. If both pass, you will be asked for your warning triangle. If you have that, you will be asked to show your fire extinguisher. Bring it out and you could still be asked to produce your first aid kit. Don't be surprised when the Kutiman asks you for your torchlight at noon. If you don't have it, prepare for some time wasting your time. You could end up in court or your money in the policeman's court. This 
has been I Speak of Ghana, written by Nana Awire Damwa, narrated by Kwame Isari. <laughs>